This video is about how to use a Lensatic compass and today I'm going to be using this which is a Comenga 3H as you can see. Um, these are made in America and they're probably the most common type of uh, Lensatic compass that are used and they're really really simple to use. I've got other videos about how to use different types of compasses such as base plate compasses, mirror compasses and what have you but this one today I'm going to stick to the Lensatic compass. So let's get straight into it. Now there's lots of things that you can do with a Lensatic compass but today I'm going to restrict myself to the two most common usage um, which would be to use it on its own and also to use it with a map. So before we start let's just run through the basic parts so just so you know which what you know what I'm talking about let's run through the basic parts of the compass there are four basic parts to this compass there's this this which is the body basically that's everything that you can see that's in green so this is it now the body has a 1 to 50,000 scale ruler on the top of it here so you can use that with a 1 to 50,000 map you can also use it with a 1 to 25,000 map all you do is if you measure a distance on the map and it says 2,000 if it's a 1 to 50,000 map then that's 2,000 meters if it's a 1 to 25,000 map then it will be 1,000 meters so you just half it so we've got the body the next part is this section here which is the dial which contains the compass and all the moving parts the next part we've got is at the edge we've got here this is the lens bracket and underneath it we've got the thumb loop and the other bit we've got here is a lanyard which is used just to attach it to yourself which, <laughs> which is always a good idea because these compasses are quite expensive. So let's have a look at the individual parts on their own. So the body itself is just is made of two parts and it's got a hinge on it in the middle so it will close all the way over so that's the body and also in the body you'll see this section here which is there's a, there's a, a hole with a, a wire inside it and there's a small notch at the top so that's the body the next part we're going to look at is the lens bracket now the lens bracket here on this particular compass what happens is if you actually look at the all the, the moving parts in the middle when you move this forward what it does is it lifts it off its uh, pivot and it locks it in place. That way, once it's closed, all the moving parts aren't going to start getting banged around inside, so uh, in your pocket or your rucksack. So that's that. So if you push the, uh, the lens bracket forward and as soon as you open it up again, all the moving parts are allowed to move. So if you watch what happens, close it to lock it off, open it to allow the compass to move freely. So inside the lens bracket we've got a lens which is here, this section, and there's also a small notch. I'll, I'll go through how they're used in a moment. And last but not least on this bit we've got the thumb loop which as the name suggests is for putting your thumb through. Okay so that's that. Now let's have a closer look at the actual compass section. So as I said this is the, uh, all this lot in here is the compass section. On the outside you've got the bezel which rotates and it clicks, If you, I don't know if you can hear that. It, uh, each time it clicks it rotates by three degrees. Okay. Now next thing you've got is the index line which is this black line here you can see on the screen. Just there. And the last thing you've got is the marker which is here. So when you rotate the uh, bezel the marker itself moves around. And as I said each time you click it it moves three degrees. Underneath the glass you have the dial which is th this numbering section here. On the outside you've got in black you've got NATO mills and on the inside in red you've got degrees. If you want to know the difference between NATO mills and degrees if you watch my video which is entitled I think it's called degrees versus mills. <laughs> Quite simple. Okay, the last but not least is this, which is quite important. This is the magnetic needle. Now, as you can see, when you rotate the compass, the needle points north, or points at magnetic north. And you've also got the west and the east uh, points marked on it. Now, because this is a Kamenga H3, what happens is, in, 
when you use it at night time, there's certain points on the compass, which is at these two points at the top of the wire, also the, the marker and certain parts of the actual compass needle itself. They've, they've got um, a de decaying isotope um, attached to them, which is tritium, which just means that it glows in the dark and it, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to use it at night time. Some cheaper compass, compasses will have phosphorus and even cheaper compasses will just have a luminous paint. But this is a, a top of the range compass, so it has this decaying isotope, tritium. So it actually does glow in the dark rather than just uh, become slightly luminous. So it, it makes it... I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put this into my rucksack and I'll, I'll video it now just so you can see what it looks like at night. So that's the basic parts of the, uh, the Kamenga. Um, next thing <laughs> we'd want to know is how do we actually use it? So what we'll do first is we'll use it with a map. Now I have to say first thing, if you do an internet search, the first thing it will tell you is to, you need to adjust for magnetic declination by placing this edge onto a diagram that's on the map and then rotating your map and pointing it in certain directions and uh, just to say that won't work in any sort of wind like we have today. It also won't work in the UK anywhere because the Ordnance Survey print diagrams, they don't actually print scaled declination uh, schematics. Most maps in the US, in America, also don't do that anymore other than military maps. So we need to come up with a way that we can use this simply with, um, with a map and account for declination and everything else. Luckily, there is a very simple way to do it. I'll just show you how that's done. So let's say that I want to go from this lake here to this lake here and I need a bearing to, to walk on. All I need to do is I just put the edge of the compass so it's touching both points. Don't forget that I walk from the dial to the wire, so I'm going in that direction. So I'm walking from here to there. If, it was, if I was walking in the opposite direction, I'd have the compass like this. But here we are. So it touches both points where I am and where I'm going to. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bezel, this thing here, until the little tritium mark points directly up the map. So it's pointing up the map, it's pointing directly north up the map. Okay, so get that, it, because it moves in three degree increments, it's never going to be exact or not normally, but you can get it as near as, near as you can. So that's that, that's now set, my compass is now set. So all I need to do to actually follow that bearing is pick up my compass and then rotate the whole compass until the north needle is directly underneath the tritium mark and if I want to read the bearing I can do the bearing is underneath the index line and I see that it's 235 but if I wanted to walk as I'm walking along just keep the needle, the north needle, directly underneath this uh, tritium mark here and that's how you take a compass bearing from a map. Now as you've taken a bearing from a map and you're putting it onto your compass you need to adjust for magnetic de declination if you live in an area where the declination is more than about two, two degrees. So let's say you took a bearing of one, two, three, that was your bearing that you were walking on if you live in an area where the magnetic declination is west, say west, 10 degrees west, then you would add 10 degrees to your bearing. So your 123 would become 133. If you live in an area where your declination is east, say 10 degrees east, your 123 degrees would actually become 113 degrees. And that is the direction that you'd actually walk on. Okay, so now the next question is, how do we take a bearing from something and find it on the map? That's a, a very common thing. Somebody sees something in the distance and they want to know what it is. So now we have to get used to how to hold the compass. So I'm going to go through the two normal ways. There are other ways, but this is it. The first way is to put your thumb through the loop, put your index finger along the edge. I'll do it sideways so you can see. So the thumb through the loop, index finger along the edge, and then 
cup your hands underneath it to keep it nice and solid. Keep it about sort of between your stomach and your chest height. That way you can actually look down at whatever it is you're doing. So you can point it like that and the other hand, this one, this can rotate the dial and that's how you do it. The other method is to your cheek. So what you do is you bend this forward slightly Put the edge of the, uh, I'll, I'll come a bit closer because you can see. And then all you're going to do is you're going to bring it up to your cheek and you're going to look down through the lens so you can see the lens and you'll be able to see the, the dial inside and you'll be able to read the degrees or the mills if that's what you're interested in. Now everybody's got different eyesight, um, so this is quite important. So you'll need to adjust the lens bracket um, to your own eyes. So for me, the perfect level is about that, okay? So for you, it may be slightly forward or slightly back. Don't forget though, if you push it too far forward, it'll stop the dial rotating. Okay, so here we go, let's have a look. So if I want to take a bearing, I look down through the lens and I can see the numbers and then I lift my eyesight just slightly, look through the notch, through the lens, uh, through the wire at the object. So it's, it's like, a, um, like a gun sight. I don't know what you call them, a rifle sight. Um, so you're looking through the, the notch at the top of this and then through the wire and then onto the target. You would then read the uh, direction or you'd read the degrees from the, uh, the dial like so. So once we've done that, I've got 63 degrees in that direction and I can see a large hill. So how do I find that on the map? Let's have a look at that. So the first thing to do, now we've taken a, a sighted uh, bearing at 63 degrees, rotate your compass until 63 is directly underneath the index line, which it is, this is the index line. Then keeping the compass still, rotate the dial until the mark, the tritium mark, is directly over the north arrow, like that. Now, as you remember, we started off from the edge of this forest and we were looking somewhere for a bearing of, we're looking for a hill that's at, at 63 degrees. So all we're going to do is put the edge of the compass on where we are in our location, so that's the edge of the forest, and I'm simply, while rotating the entire compass, keeping it, the edge of it, on the forest, and when the index, sorry, not the index, when the tritium mark here is pointing straight up the map, then that is the bearing that I actually took, and the hill that I can see on the mark is here. There's the summit of the hill, it's called Turton Moor. And that is how you take a bearing and put it onto the map using a lensatic compass. Don't forget you need to adjust for magnetic declination. So in this case, instead of west add, east subtract, it's exactly the opposite because you're going from a compass to the map. So that's how a very quick run through of how to use a lensatic compass with a map. You can take a bearing from a map and then follow it, or you can see something in the distance, take a bearing from it and then put it onto the map. The next thing to do is how to use the compass without a map. Let's face it, most of the time people are going to have a map and a compass, but sometimes you don't. Let's say somebody's given you a bearing of, I don't know, three, four, five, and they ask you to follow that bearing for a certain distance. How do you set a bearing that you can follow on a lensatic compass? So let's go through that. So someone's asked you to follow a bearing of 345. All you're going to do is you're going to rotate the entire compass until the black index line is directly over the 345 mark on the dial. So there you go, there's 345. That's that set. And then we're going to rotate the bezel until the marker is, let's just get that straight again. It moved. <laughs> there you go. We're going to rotate the marker 
until it is directly over the north arrow. There, like that. So now your 354 bearing is in that direction. Okay, so all we do is look from here to something in the distance that we can walk to and follow it on a bearing of 345. So the last scenario is, let's say that you know that somebody is on the top of a hill or they're in a building that you can see and you want to tell them to come to your location. So all you're going to do is you're going to take a bearing from where you can see where they are. So let's have a look. I take my bearing and I can see they're at a bearing of 200. Okay, so there, from me to them is a bearing of 200. So all you need to do is you need to use your mobile phone or whatever, contact them and tell, tell them the bearing to come to you. So all you need to do is subtract 180. Um, so the, they're going to walk to you on a bearing of 20. Yep, it's dead simple. So that is how you use a lens attic compass. As I said, <laughs> very simplified and these don't be put off by these things. They are very simple to use. Thanks for watching.